everyone, and welcome to another edition of Coffee with Cade. I am excited to be your host for today. My name is Kristen Young. I am the communications coordinator of the Cade Foundation, and I am excited to have this conversation today. So before we get started, you know the drill. I need you to share this video, share this video, share this video. Make sure you tag somebody who needs it. Make sure you let somebody know uh, this is happening every first and third Monday of the month at 12 noon on the Tanina QK Foundation page. So, um, and we're on Facebook and Instagram too, y'all. So make sure you like us, like us and share this video. Okay, so we are excited to have this conversation. Today, we're talking a little bit about PCOS. PCOS, what does that look like? What's the deal? And, um, and how do you find your purpose? Going from PCOS to purpose. So I am excited to bring on someone who um, has done exactly that, found their journey through life uh, from P PCOS to purpose and um, has created a ministry and, and has been writing, writing books and all kinds of stuff to um, support you on your journey supporting her herself on her own journey and uh, and just making sure people know that the support is there. And I think that's one of the things that no matter what situation you're in, you're always looking for who can I, who who understands, who gets me, who understands this season of my life. Um, and I think she has a powerful story and and way of being able to do just that. So Dr. Kamika Henson, welcome. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm you so are so welcome here. <laughs> well, I, I am honored to have you here. So welcome, welcome, welcome. So I just kind of gave an overview, but tell me, uh, tell me a little more in a little more detail. Mm -hmm. What does, what does this, what, what tell us about your story and what is PCOS? Well, PCOS is polycystic ovary syndrome and with polycystic ovary syndrome you basically you do not ovulate because the you have small cysts in your ovaries and you can have insulin resistance you need the insulin to for the um, ovaries to mature so you can ovulate if you have insulin resistance, that's not going to happen. So basically, you're not going to ovulate with PCOS. No. Um, when I did my um, got my blood drawn, my results showed that my body was in menopausal state, a menopausal state. Mm -hmm. So basically, I had to just figure out a way to. And if, if you don't mind me asking, about what age was that? I was diagnosed at, it was 2007. So I was about 24, 23, 24. So around 24 years old, your doctors were saying your body was in a menopausal state already. Yes, I knew that something was going on. I was just actively trying to get pregnant, but it just was not happening. I knew that I was having irregular menstrual cycles. And I basically went to the doctor to see what's going on. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I had switched doctors at that time because nobody else knew. So when I went to the doctor, he had he had um, great reviews. Somebody actually recommended the doctor to me. Mm -hmm. He had great reviews. So I went to him and I just explained to him what my symptoms were. And he said, it sounds like you have PCOS. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow. <laughs> right. But he was like, um, I'll still have to confirm that with your um, lab results, but it sounds like you have PCOS. What does that, what does that, how, how did that affect you in that, in that season? Cause you know, you're saying you were, you were a very young woman, you were actively trying to get pregnant. And then your doctor says, this is the reason why you're not getting pregnant. What you know, what's, what is that, what is that mindset at that point? Oh my goodness. I was so depressed at that point. I, I didn't know what to do, mm -hmm. but I've always been a fighter. I don't give up easily. After I 
got over my moment of depression, I decided that, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna fix this some way, somehow. So, um, but while being depressed, I started to gain more weight. I actually tipped the scale at 419 pounds. <laughs> from, from how much? Um, so I was, I was still, I was overweight mm -hmm. in 2007, but I think I went from like 320 to 419 pounds in about a year or two. So about a hundred pounds in about, in a year. Yes. Wow. Strictly from stress and yes, maybe stress eating as well, or, or mm -hmm. you know, just going through all of the, all of the, and it's a lot. I mean, anytime, anytime you receive, you know, and then your doctor just says, well, that's, it's not going to happen the way you thought it was going to happen. And, 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 and you don't even know the how you can't figure it out. And I know that's, you know, it's a separate conversation when you are really getting into, actually, it's not a separate conversation when you're getting into that faith walk. And it's like, because we don't, we don't always know the how. I was definitely there at that point. Yes, I was. Um, I, I was, I was starting to give up, lose my faith. I decided to pull myself out of this slump that I was in and do something about it. Mm -hmm. It took me about 10 years, roughly 10 years to actually have the surgery. Mm. <laughs> now, was is that more of an, an emotional and mental thing or was that a financial thing? Was it a doctor, a medical thing? What was, what was the holdup? It was a combination of all of that. At all first, that. my insurance did not cover um, did not cover the surgery. Mm -hmm. Then we worked hard with the surgeons and it was a whole group collaboration where we got our hospital to actually cover the surgery mm -hmm. because we were a bariatric surgery center of excellence. But we could not utilize that center of excellence and the surgeons, they got a whole bunch of people together and we, we fixed that. So <laughs> by the time, um, I actually got insurance to cover the surgery. Then, you know, you have to lose a certain amount of weight when you're having bariatric surgery. And I did not meet that weight, the weight um, limit. I know that I want a child. This is what I have to do to get that child. Mm -hmm. My purpose my focus was like okay the next job that I get they have to cover the surgery or I'm not going to take the job okay, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> so that's exactly what I did I mean I started at my current job that I'm at now and I would say within a year mm -hmm. within a year I had the surgery love it, love it. <laughs> but I had to change my mindset because you know, I was all over the place and I did not like where I was at that time but I yeah and I mean and it's one of those things that we all know again no matter what situation you're in no matter what adjustment you're about to make it's all a mindset shift a shift once you change your mindset how you look at it how you feel about it how you think about it all the other things start to fall into place but you've got to make that one adjustment first. So I am excited to hear that you made that journey. So then what led you to Jeremiah's journey? <laughs> so about two years after I had my surgery, I, I had um, an IUD. I got my IUD removed because I knew, okay, we're going to see if, this thing actually worked. <laughs> I did not believe that I could get pregnant. I did not believe it. Nobody could have told me that I would be pregnant, but I was still, I still had a little bit of faith. Okay. This is going to yeah, That mustard seed, huh? Just that, just yes. that mustard seed. Half <laughs> a mustard seed. <laughs> <laughs> and lo and behold, I got pregnant. Okay. So when I found out that I was pregnant, 
I went to the emergency room and I didn't know what was going on with me. I was tired. I, I didn't know what was going on. They didn't know what was going on. They did a pregnancy test and it was negative. Okay. So um, I was still having symptoms. So I decided to do my own pregnancy test. And it was a faint line. It was very faint, but it was there. And I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> So then um, I started bleeding and I called my doctor and I told her that um, I had a positive pregnancy test, but now I'm bleeding. They did an emergency ultrasound and I got a chance to see my baby. Mm. So then she was like, you're fine. Everything is fine. Just calm down. You're going to be okay. Bleeding in the first trimester is normal. Okay. So about a week or two later. That's it. And that's it. And, and I know we, we uh, spoke on it earlier, but that's, that's going to be the biggest thing, just finding support so you don't feel alone. So many people who are dealing with, with, uh, you know, a lot of emotional trauma and, 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 and mental trauma. We want to isolate ourselves. And to a certain degree, it's okay to, to have your alone time, but you can't stay in that isolation. You have to reach out to somebody and it's not always going to be your family because I'm sure you know that there, you know, you have your own <laughs> stories of of you know and, and that's probably a whole nother show <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> but you know, we can't always depend on our family we want to believe and we're, we're unfortunately we're i won't say unfortunately but we're often taught from early on you you know family is everything and family will always be there and family always understands and they don't they don't and sometimes it's that they want to support but they don't know how because if you mm. have not been in that position if you have no clue what I'm dealing with, what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling, it's hard to get in there with you to truly offer that support, which is why, you know, I'm always an advocate for therapy, for counseling, for seeking professional help, for seeking, you know, the guidance of somebody who has been there. Get some, you know, get with, find someone, whether, you know, you're associated with a religious organization, whether you're, um, you know, it's it's a just a mentor that you find online, or you know, another support group, or or something like Jeremiah's journey, but find support, find support, and find someone who can understand that you can call and say, "This is what I'm dealing with," and they can say, "I get it, I get it." Wow. Ooh, yeah, that would be a whole nother show if I go into. <laughs> <laughs> but this is why we have shows like this coffee with Cade so uh, for those of you if you're just now tuning in we are speaking with Dr. Kamika Henson uh, she is the founder of Jeremiah's Journey and sharing her her powerful story of going from a diagnosis of PCOS and how that supported her with finding her purpose and how she is able to support other women who are going through infertility who have experienced um, loss who are who are finding who are looking for their own purpose in life because it's you know life is real life is real sometimes I'm just like God why didn't you just shoot me out the womb with this script that says <laughs> at one you do this at nine you're gonna do this at seventeen you'll do this at twenty two you'll do that that that's that's what I'm looking for I'm like you know <laughs> just why have you do all this guessing Lord <laughs> yes. <laughs> But well, where would we be? What would faith be if he did all of that for us? You know, we got to walk by faith. So thank you so much for, for sharing this part of your story. I know you. All right. Well, once again, thank you so much, Dr. Kamika. We appreciate you. And thank you to all of our viewers. We appreciate you for continuing to tune in. We are here every first and third Monday at 12 noon Eastern time. So mark your calendar, have lunch with us. Most of y'all are still home, working from home, quarantining and all of that. So make sure you, you tune in. Have